Hello, so I am Cédric Ducrot, I'm CEO of Diamart, a French retail consulting group and uh, the French member of Eveltoft, which is an international network of consulting experts. I have the honor today, with, together with uh, Jose Carlos, to present what is probably within... Uh, I've been a consultant for 20 years, and what I'm going to talk about today is the most exciting project I ever worked on during those 20 years. Nothing less than reinventing the hypermarket with the inventor of the hypermarket. Quite a subject. As we all know, the hypermarket have been struggling in mature markets for 10 years, basically. That's even more true. Excuse for my voice. Yesterday, I've been shouting to support the award so loud that it's a bit uh, broken. No. <laughs> So hypermarkets have been struggling. It's even more true if you just think about large hypermarkets, as Carrefour, and even more true if you think mainly about non-food. Really, the non-food performances are difficult. That means less clients coming less often, and basically, uh, at the end, you've got a decrease of the turnover per square meter. Those figures are for Europe across the last 10 years, for all the hypermarkets, not specifically Carrefour, and you see that it's not really exciting. After all, the turnover has been decreasing from, in a significant way across 10 years. So we had really to be much more aggressive and to try to find solutions. We know the problem, they are well known. The problem of hypermarket, large hypermarket, has been well known for years and years now. It's about clients, it's about competition, and it's above all about the role of hypermarkets. I'm going to have a word about each of them. Concerning the clients, this guy is one of the worst enemy of, our, of hypermarkets. 20 years ago, the products we used to sell in hypermarkets were exciting products. That was the place where the excitement was. Today, because of him and some other guys of this kind, <laughs> the excitement has gone. People, I mean, we, our categories in hypermarket, most of them have lost the competition for the share of wealth and the share of, share of uh, brain available time. What we sell is just not interesting that much customer. They, they are more interested in health, communication, real estate, and so on. This is, uh, of, of course, a problem because it means that you must create your turnover and not just follow the needs. It's about competition also. In food, we have, already, uh, we have now many small formats selling very good fresh products, selling convenience at low prices, you know that by heart. It's even more a problem in non-food. All the markets, almost all the markets in mature countries are served today by extremely performing specialist stores that do a fantastic job. And so the question is simple. Why would you, as a consumer, buy a TV or a jacket in an hypermarket rather than one on, in one of those specialist stores? This is a fundamental problem for a large hypermarket because they use the non-food to create, to create attractivity and to create traffic, and it's a large part of the turnover. The conclusion is clear. For an hypermarket, a large hypermarket, you cannot just remain a generalist. If you want to compete against those guys, you need to be just as performing, as competent as they are, which is a complete, complete shift in the model. Maybe even deeper than that, more than clients and, and competition, that, which are classical uh, uh, threats for uh, retailers, I would say that the social, the historical social role of the hypermarket has changed. If you think about what it used to be, hypermarkets, the role, the reason of living of hypermarkets was to give access to modern consumption to medium classes by proposing choice, price, and excitement. The problem is that today, the choice is bigger at specialist store, the prices are not better at hypermarkets, and the excitement has gone. So hypermarkets remain a very powerful format with many clients, but the magic has gone, and it's a, well, they are under pressure. 
The fundamental change of that, the meaning of that, is that you, if you are a large hypermarket, you must create your turnover. You can't just serve the need. You can't just give access to consumption. You must create the desire to buy, to buy more, and to buy there. This means that you must shift from giving access to creating desire to buy. This is not about, this is not a change of the commercial model. This is a change of the role, of the spirit, of the DNA, of the culture of the hyper market. This is why we dare say that with Planet, we try to reinvent the hyper market and not only to improve it. It's, a, it's really a, a, a fundamental change. So the challenge was difficult. We, we in Ableton, we keep tracking the innovation all over the world. And what I can tell you is that we see much more new formats than successful reinvention of existing formats. It's obviously much more difficult to reinvent the existing than to create brand new. Is it possible? Well, we've got some examples that prove that it's possible. Galerie Lafayette, department store in Paris, is a fantastic example of reinventing a declining format. You know that the Galerie Lafayette store in Boulevard Haussmann is the biggest store in terms of turnover worldwide, in all sectors and countries, the biggest store in the world. And this biggest store in the world had performances last year of plus 20% of turnover. They created more than 200 million euros turnover in one year. Okay? So tell me about reinventing a declining format. Laura Merlin in uh, DIY, for example, has completely reinvented the format. Or Mercadona in Spain used to be a pretty traditional supermarket chain 15 years ago and is today a UFO uh, in terms of uh, performances, market share, and so on. So yes, it's possible. It's terribly difficult. Uh, and uh, well, that's the challenge uh, Carrefour has tried to address. I believe this is not quite modest, what I'm going to say, but I believe that planet is really something important. If you think about the, the innovation of the last 10 years or last 20 years in retail, you've got some more disruptive innovation. I mean, the, the invention of Amazon or of the drive are more disruptive in terms of level of intensity of the innovation. But what is unique with planet is that you've got at the same time a high level of reinvention and a scale that is absolutely gigantic. Because we are talking about billions uh, of turnover, billions of euros turnover, thousands of people, hundreds of stores. It's, a, it's gigantic, it's a hypermarket. It's the dominant male of the retailer. So this is why I dare say that Planet, to me, is the most important event across the last 30 years in retail. And as you can imagine, to conclude, well, we are, we are in the Amart a bit proud of having been part of that. And I think that it's, uh, Planet is above all a message of hope for all the retailers. It proves that the future is open, that if there is a will, there's a way. It works. You can do it. 